so we've been talking about various aspects of Twitter, the anatomy of a, of a Twitter account, um, and uh, we'll talk now about uh, hashtags. Hashtags are one of the biggest things about Twitter. They've entered the lexicon. In general, you might hear about hashtags on the, on the news or in a radio ad or on TV or in a movie trailer. And hashtags are basically on Twitter anything that is preceded with the hash mark. Notice that the pound sign, hash mark, whatever you want to call it, the, this little mark, which is on the keyboard, it's shift, uh, shift three is the hash mark. Hash marks, hashtags, um, can be any length up to 140 characters, so your one tweet could be one long hashtag, which is pretty weird. But the thing is that the hashtags have no spaces. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is obviously three words, but the hashtag Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is one word, no spaces. You can put uh, underscores, I believe, and you can put numbers, but you can't put spaces because as soon as you add a space, it breaks the word. Apostrophes are also no good, so watch this. I'm going to go to the top where I'm going to tweet something, and I'm going to say, um, sail this Sunday, use this hash coupon. As I start to write a hashtag, it might recommend different hashtags. I'm starting to write coupon, and it recommends Kushan, Kushan, I don't know what that is, or it recommends couples therapy. Couple, couple, or coup de France. No, I mean coupon, so I'm going to ignore that. Oh, then it recommends coupon. So if there are hashtag recommendations and they make sense, I would use them. Because this is Twitter trying to help you to say these are hot terms that are happening that could help you connect with a larger audience. Because Twitter doesn't have communities. One of the best things about Google Plus is communities, where you reach an audience that is very interested in a certain topic. That the closest analog on Twitter is the hashtag. Um, other networks have adopted the hashtag as well. Um, Google Plus has hashtags, but they didn't quite take off. Communities are way better, and then also collections. Uh, Facebook has hashtags. Does anyone ever use hashtags on Facebook? Has anyone ever seen a hashtag on Facebook? Yeah. Okay. What is it about? I just don't get that. Hundred percent quite sure. What is the hashtag and what can I do? And can you explain a little bit? I'm going to do it. I'm I'm getting to all of that. Yes, definitely. Um, so, if you get any recommendations on hashtags, I would use them. But I'm going to add the hashtag coupon because the point of this is, as, I, as we'll see when I publish it in a moment, this is going to link together all of the tweets on Twitter with that topic. So hashtags are like keywords, they're like topics. So I'm going to say, sale this Sunday, use this coupon. And it's going to be the coupon save me 10 at checkout. And then maybe I'll also add a link to my website, victor.com shop. So I'm crafting a much more dense tweet right here in that I've added a link to my website. I've added a hashtag. I could attach also a picture. And then I'll tweet that. The point of this is, once I tweet this, this is now an active link. Hashtags are active links. So on my tweet with that hashtag, if someone finds that tweet and clicks on coupon, or if they, on their own Twitter account, up here, search hashtag coupon all of the tweets that are using that hashtag will appear and somewhere there's mine in addition to Kate Ellison and Walmart and Holly Marie and freebies for mom and blurb and inspiration for moms on and on and on and on and on <coughs> Walmart and Walgreens and Wendy's look at this Wendy's uh, well, actually, when this is a promoted post, don't worry about that. Uh, but Michael's, you know, famous Michael's store, they're using coupon. Anyone can use a hashtag, not just a big famous company like Michael's, 
that has 155,000 followers. My tweet showed up here just like everyone else's briefly because more and more content is going to come out, especially with big famous hashtags. New, new tweets are going to push away the old, hash, the old tweets because there's just so many new ones. That's the point of a tweet. It, it helps connect me to a community using a, a hashtag. You see movies, you know, like let's say another Saw movie is going to come out. That would probably have the hashtag, hashtag Saw movie. S-A-W-M-O-V-I-E. No space. Saw number 10, Saw number 10 times 2. <laughs> so you can make up hashtags. You can use hashtags that exist. Let's say my own company on Victor's Bakery. I'm going to tweet whatever. Let's, let's pretend that's something meaningful. And every time I tweet something, I'm going to use the hashtag VixPix. So I can make up my own hashtag. No one will use it, perhaps, because I have zero followers. But if I use that hashtag every time that I can on a tweet, and I put it on my website, and I put it on a business card, and I put it everywhere that I can. Maybe I also put it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. I'm trying to build awareness for that hashtag. And maybe I will build or awareness organically little by little. Or maybe some famous YouTube personality will favorite my tweet, will retweet my tweet with my hashtag, and then suddenly my hashtag has credibility. And the followers of that famous Twitter user will then see my hashtag and maybe start adding to it. Like this, I made up a hashtag a, a little while ago, and it was called Banks Emmy. Anyone watch um, Better Call Saul? Yep. Or um, Breaking Bad? Yep. So back in March, there was an amazing episode of Better Call Saul, a TV show, and the actor, um, I think Jonathan Banks, acted so well that I tweeted and made the hashtag Banks Emmy. He needs an Emmy. So other people um, used it also, but not so much that it really took off and made me famous or whatever. But see, some people used it. If you go back in the history, you'll see I was the first one to use that, that hashtag right there, March 9th at uh, 8 p.m. That's the keyword. That's the subject of that tweet, basically. So I use that subject, that keyword, and then other people use it. Not so many people, but over here. Obviously, I'm trying to make it stick. Okay, Supercharger used it, Nikki Hill, and Doc, and Mrs. Ermin Trout, and Quinton Edmondson and Chris Phoenix and Homemade Weapons, and that's it. After that, it didn't really take off. But that's okay. Not every hashtag takes off and gets a light. Better call Saul hashtag. That one is a big hashtag. That one's going to have thousands of tweets. But just to check, if I go Better Call Saul, hashtag Better Call Saul, I can look at the top tweets of a hashtag, what's happening right now with that tweet, three minutes ago. Um, any accounts that have that hashtag in the biography? We haven't talked about editing the biography yet. <coughs> um, any photos that have that hashtag? Any videos? And more options, which we'll look at. I'm going to go back to home just to see that on the left, trends, hashtag VS Fashion Show is trending. 298,000 tweets are happening right now about that. Scream Queens Finale, 81,000. Being Mary Jane, 15,000. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So those are hashtags. Keywords that you add to your tweets of a topic that links them all together so that you can get found, so that you can congregate with people. I really care about, let's say, the Scream Queens show. And I click on that, and it's going to show me all the tweets of those things, and then I can start to interact with people. Alex, I don't know who Alex is at all. Laughing at the way they all ran. Matthew, 
there was a bomb on him and they just let him for dead instead of trying to help him, lol. So all of these people are using that hashtag. I could then do favorite. Alex got a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. At that point, Alex can say thanks and move on with his life. Or, because my picture will show up next to that notification, he can hover over my picture and say, oh, this he's tweeting about cooking and baking and all of that stuff. I like that too. Let me follow him. Or they could have retweeted it or replied or, or whatever. That's why, just like when we talked about um, in Google+, Plus, you want to have some content, some tweets, before trying to entice people to follow you, because if you have nothing to show for it, why would they follow you? Again, three to five to ten tweets. But tweets, you're going to see that something strikes your fancy, tweet about it. Something's interesting, tweet about it. Take a photo on your mobile and tweet about it. Tweets are free. You can have thousands of tweets. Right there, 27,000 tweets. It's okay. You can have as many tweets as you want. That's okay. nice. Well, that's a good point. Uh, let me bring that up here. So on my Twitter account, um, followers, following, um, thing is that, um, again, I have 638 followers, but I don't need to follow all 638 of them. That's okay. You're, you're, you don't need to do that. You really want to follow the accounts that really have important stuff for you, that you want to follow, that you care about. And um, one tactic is to simply search and find people and click follow, 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 follow. But there are limits. I think per day, I think it's about 50, maybe 200 that you can follow in one day. After that, Twitter will say, this seems to be a spam bot. Why are they suddenly following 500 accounts at once? Spam. And they could shut you down. So then at a certain point, you follow up to 2,000 people, and then it stops you from following more until you get more followers. That's also a technique for spammers. Just follow 10 today, 10 tomorrow, 10 tomorrow, 10 tomorrow, 100 tomorrow, until you get to 2,000 but you're not posting anything meaningful. So Twitter does, not that they monitor it, but they have algorithms that check. How many are you following? How many followers do you have? How many tweets do you have? If you have activity and you're following some accounts, you'll get more followers. If you have activity and you try to follow more, it will let you, and, and so forth. So the thing is that usually a if I go back to these hashtags, coupon, and I just browse, these are the people that are tweeting this coupon. Anyone can tweet, of course. I'm kind of seeing here, super pages. I feel they're spamming. They're kind of tweeting almost the same sort of thing, just on a rapid procession. Here's Jimmy Kimmel. If it's promoted. Yes. If more people click block or report, it does shut down the account because we want good accounts. So we don't want to over go overboard with, with hashtags and so forth. So I would say at the maximum three hashtags. Lift riders get 20% off your hashtag lift, hashtag ride, hashtag promo, hashtag code, hashtag winter, hashtag promo, hashtag lift. I think that's spam. They're trying to reach, it's like a shotgun approach. They're trying to hit as much as they can. 
people that are interested in the hashtag lift, and they use the hashtag lift twice. It's a weird number. This is, must be a spam account, even though they're using the official logo. I bet they're spammers. Uh, but they're trying to hit people with so many hashtags. Those searching for ride, for winter, for code. Yes? Do you feel like it's unsuccessful for people to use that many hashtags? Yes. It's going to be unsuccessful in the long term because not maybe not uh, maybe not a lot of people, but enough people are going to notice that it you know right away as as you get savvy, as people get savvy using Twitter as they use it, they will start to see so many hashtags like a spammer. So it's going to be diminishing returns. At a certain point, you're going to you yourself are going to subconsciously going to start to cancel those out that seem like they're just full of hashtags like a spammer. And then also people could report. How many would you suggest? At the maximum three. You know, because a lot of people, and I know those that don't spam their actual accounts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they have like 20 or 30 of them. <laughs> Every yeah. post, it's amazing. Yeah, on, on Instagram is a different matter because you can put up to 30. And that's kind of okay on Instagram, but I wouldn't put 30 hashtags on, on a tweet. I wouldn't put more than three on a tweet. So you do want to be judicious with your hashtags. The one or two, maybe three hashtags that really have to do with your post and also to reach an audience. I sort of feel that this coupon hashtag is really overrun with a lot of spammers just by browsing like Kate Ellison. Kate Ellison posted this and this and this in rapid succession, even in Japanese. So this is a particular hashtag that I think is overrun. You're not really going to get much use out of it. And you won't know that until you actually research a hashtag or use a hashtag. Three new results happened as I was talking. Software coupon account you can always research hashtags because a hashtag is just a search. That search button at the very top. Let's say I'm gonna search hashtag cookie. It's recommending <coughs> cookies, cookie monster, <coughs> cookie care, cookies for Santa. Any one of those I might think about using in a tweet or two, but I'm gonna first, you know, you can ignore the suggestion and just just click search or choose an option. I'm going to ignore the suggestion and just press enter to search. And then the top, well, Betty Crocker, of course. Pictures with cookies, Connie Loizos, Silicon Valley editor at TechCrunch Andres, Pan, Panini Press enthusiast. For some reason, she might tweet a lot about cookies. So she popped up here. What's your blog company? They're using the hashtag there, cookie and recipe. That's not so bad. Two hashtags and a link and a nice picture. Butcher Block Company, 14,000 followers. I'm a, and then I read this biography and it makes me think, oh, they've got a phone number too. Spammers don't have phone numbers. Spammers don't have a well-written biography. If I'm still iffy, I can always click the tweets to actually read the tweets. And I see all this great stuff that is about cooking and, and so forth. Okay, follow. Butcher Block just got a notification that said Victor's Bakery followed you. I could get a follow back. I could get a, a favorite to a tweet. I could get a reply to a tweet. But following to get followers is a tactic. Usually it's very skewed that let's say you follow 10 accounts. Maybe one will follow you back. Let's say you follow 40 accounts. Maybe two will follow you back. You don't know. You won't know until you check the account. I wouldn't simply just click random follow, follow, follow. I would look at what they tweet. I would check if they ever reply or retweet to others. That gives me an indication that they might be opening, they might be running the dialogue of social media instead of a monologue. It sort of feels that I'm probably not going to get a, re a, a refollow from Butcher Block because I don't really see them interacting too much with their followers. I can switch it from tweets to tweets and replies. And 
no, I don't really see them mentioning other accounts and saying, thank you for following, great picture, you know, I don't think I'm going to get a follow from you. And that's okay, that happens all the time. I'm going to search hashtag. Notice they put a hashtag in their bio. We'll, we'll edit the bio in a moment because this is the way for you to entice people. What are you about? Maybe contact info, maybe link to your website, etc. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at Kitchen. Seven exotic salts that boost nutrient levels and improve thyroid function from energy, grip, energy Ripple. And what I was going to say earlier about followers and following, one way to decide to do a follow is check. How many are they following? How many do they have followers? His ratio here is a little higher of following to followers. Usually, the more legitimate, useful accounts have more followers than they are following, because that means enough people are more interested into what they say, followers, than them looking and scrounging for who to follow. So this ratio here is a little more skewed toward following, but it's not that bad. 200 difference? Not that bad. If they were following 2,000 and they had 7 followers, I wouldn't follow them. It seems like a pretty low quality account. Beth Monroe. Let's see here. Following 39, 577 followers. The ratio just on the surface seems good. More followers to following. Although I'm a little worried. So many tweets, so few followers. It doesn't really correlate that the number of tweets will equal how many followers you have, but it seems like she's got a lot to say. Says, I love cooking in the kitchen for friends and family and enjoying a good meal. I even like cooking, going out to eat. Food is my passion and my self expression. So, okay, I'm going to check out some of those tweets. She has the bunch of retweets. Yeah, most of these tweets are other people's tweets. I'm kind of getting a sense. Spam. A lot of great posts, but they're not hers. She seems to be copying them from somewhere. RT means retweet, which is the old style of retweeting. The new style, you just click the retweet button. This is a different style. Kind of seems spammy. Like this is coming from some other account and they're just putting their name on it. And you boys on Shantae. So that one sort of seems iffy. You see, when I think you want to be your own business, that's what you guys see me. Somebody else is saying you got too much posting on the daily so people get annoyed. So if you're not commercial or some advertising, you have to be really focused. There's so much to balance. That's right. You could tweet too much. Um, you know, once a day is good. Once a week is fine. Uh, ten times a day, maybe too much. Three times a day, it depends. Three times a day might not be so bad. Uh, some accounts, especially blog accounts, tweet a lot because they've got a lot to say. But yeah, there is a there is a point where a person it's way too many tweets. I follow one person uh, that that tweets a lot, but I haven't I haven't unfollowed because I like what they tweet. They tweet a lot, but I like to read what they say. Your audience, yes, you may lose. You may have twenty followers and you tweet a lot. Maybe two will say this is too much and they stop following it, and that's okay. If that's your particular style to tweet a lot, you will get the people that care about that style and the people that don't, they won't follow you. That's okay. There's still 320 more a million other people that you could reach. So famous actress Ming, Ming Na Wen right here, baked some crumbly yummy cranberry and blueberry scones. Now let's break out the, buffet, the butter and tea. She's got 
half a million followers. So if I click a reply here or a favorite or anything like that, she probably will not see me. Not that she's a bad person, but she's got so many people that follow her. She's probably not paying attention. But what I could do is I could click on her tweet, the time of the tweet, for example, and see who is interacting. Erica, please pass on any good gluten-free recipes. Um, Jimmy, could you provide the recipe? So here's my tactic. Don't try to interact with the big names. Interact with the little names. Erica, reply to Erica. And I could say, we've got a great gluten-free recipe for you. Smiley face, link, And so I'm connecting with someone that cared about a topic that my company cares about. Yes, a random stranger. Yes, it is going to be scary when you do it the first time. This works. You're reaching an audience that cares about what your company cares about. Several things could happen at this point. I could be totally ignored because she might have her setting that says, only show me tweets tailored to me. We've never made a connection. She doesn't know who, who I am, so she doesn't get the notification. That's one thing. So no, no, nothing comes from it. That's okay. What could happen, of course, she could say, who are you? Block. Report. <laughs> That's the extreme aspect. That doesn't really happen. If you're nice, if you're being useful, if you're being real, you know, a smiley face is so 20th century. So I'm going to put in here an emoji, actually. Uh, GetEmoji.com uh, What's a good emoji that is friendly and food? This one right here of the licking the lips, maybe? Mm. You've got a great gluten-free cookie recipe for you that will change your life. Again, what you write depends on the character of your company. Here, this is a very friendly company, putting the smileys and all of that. I don't quite want that if I am a tax preparer. Mm -hmm. I don't want the tax preparer to be tweeting jokes and smiley faces and all of that kind of fun stuff. Are they going to be that that friendly or that um, juvenile with my taxes? So it depends on your your company. But yes, I'm going to tweet to this random person. That's a that's a fake link. I'm a fake account. Doesn't matter. This is just an example. And so now Erica possibly got the notification either on her web uh, site or on her on her mobile device right on her app. I might get ignored. I might get uh, an angry reply. I might get blocked. I might get a nice reply. I might get a favorite to my tweet. I might get a retweet to my tweet to share my fake recipe to 21,000 followers. Um, so <coughs> I might get a reply or even better I might get a follow. So all the social networks are going to have those main interactions. Some sort of favorite mechanism. Google Plus has plus one. Twitter at the moment has the heart, which is a favorite, which used to be called the uh, it's the like. It used to be called the favorite, which was a little star. Now it's a heart. Same concept. Facebook has the thumbs up. Um, uh, Pinterest has the heart also. Um, you see, you see hearts, thumbs up, plus ones, all of these ways to show approval. That's one of the main interactions of all the networks. You've also got some sort of way to share your content to more people. In Twitter, it's a retweet. On Facebook, it's a share. On Google+, Plus, it's a share. On other networks, one of them calls it a redab. I'm going to dab it to someone else. You've got a way to comment to keep a conversation going. 
and then also a way to follow the four main interactions of every network, basically. I, have, I seem to have another notification about the top here. Let's check it out. Jen and, Jen and Gav liked my tweet. Remember this one I made a little while ago? Yeah, oftentimes the important stuff has changed too much. Sad cat. And then so she did a favorite. You know, that's the that's the lowest interaction. It's not the worst. The worst is 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 ignore. Well actually the worst would be, you know, to be blocked or reported, I guess. But here's just a pat on the head, basically. Maybe if she had replied to, to that, I could keep the conversation going. And this, I call it, I'm sure there's other terms for it, but I call this fishing. I'm putting bait to catch fish. I'm replying to people. I'm favoriting tweets. I'm retweeting tweets. I'm following accounts. I'm fishing. I'm trying to get the same back. A reply, a retweet, a favorite, a follow. And just like if you do fish, you're going to spend a lot of time on that boat to catch the fish eventually. Sometimes you don't catch a fish. But on social media, you're going to do the same thing to some degree. You're going to put out bait to catch fish, to get followers, ultimately. The more followers you get, the more audience you have when you actually tweet something, post something on Google+, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. If you keep an eye out over here, Hip Hop Star Wars just started trending. So that could be a hashtag that I could use somehow. Star Wars is about to come out in a couple of weeks. Here, uh, Hip Hop Star Wars seems to be something that's starting to catch um, attention. So perhaps I can, um, perhaps I can tweet something um, with that hashtag to get in on the action that's happening right now. Let's do this. Open another browser tab or window and let's go to TweetDeck.com. TweetDeck is an amazing addition to Twitter which will allow multiple people to manage a Twitter account because over on Google Plus and Facebook you can have multiple managers. Everyone logs in with their own account and manages the Google Plus business page or the Facebook business page. Twitter for a long time did not have a system like that, meaning that everyone needed to log in to the one Twitter account with the one password. So if one person doesn't have good cybersecurity sense and they get hacked, the main account then got hacked for everyone. Well, TweetDeck is Twitter's way for multiple people to edit one Twitter account with their own password. So if one person gets hacked, all you have to do is disconnect that person from the business account. Log in with the Twitter name and password that you, that you made. What's that? I use it because I have more than one Twitter account. This is a great way to manage more than one Twitter account or for multiple people to um, manage one account or also as a great activity tracking tool. How did those people know when I tweeted my first tweet? In TweetDeck, we can set filters to monitor keywords, hashtags, and phrases. And when that keyword appears here, then I can act upon it. So the TweetDeck interface is kind of weird to, to work with the first time you see it, but there's a home screen which is the same thing like I'm seeing on my regular home screen. Everything that I tweet or everything that I follow, see there's Richard Blaze and it's going to show up down here. 
right there. So it's going to show it to you in this condensed column where you can do the, the favorite and the reply, etc. You're going to see a quick view of notifications. Instead of jumping to the notification screen, your notifications will automatically show up here right away. You see that right there. Any private messages, will, will I will see them right away here instead of having to go to the separate screen. And then there's a cool one called activity, which is it'll show you butcher block as I follow butcher block, butcher block liked this tweet, butcher block followed that account, butcher block followed this account. So this is more information that I can use to connect with interesting accounts. Look at tweets if one of my accounts that I follow liked. A particular tweet, I will be made aware of it here where that where then I can like it, I can reply, maybe get another follow. And so all of these main columns are also found here on the side because I can uh, add more columns, that little plus sign, add a column. Show me a column of what a particular user is tweeting. So I can always keep up to that, up to date with there. Show me a column of what's trending. We're not going to have time to talk about lists and collections. Uh, we'll talk about scheduled in a moment. But I can look here on uh, search. I can add a new column of search. And I'll be searching always for the hashtag cookie. Let's say cookies for Santa. I want to see tweets with that hashtag, what kind of content, any content, pictures, video, or I can narrow it down. From any particular user or anyone? What kind of engagement has happened? Have it, has it had retweets? Has it had replies? And here's a sample, and I'll say add the column. So now I'm going to get a brand new column. As Cookies for Santa gets used, it'll automatically populate that column. That's how perhaps that account favorited us that we use that tweet. Because he had a filter here, a search filter for a hashtag or even a phrase. You don't have to use a hashtag. You can use the word, I like Star Wars. You know, not as a hashtag, but as a regular sentence. And anyone that uses that phrase will pop up here on TweetDeck. Add column for search. Search I love. Star Wars. See, it's not a hashtag, technically. And things related to what I search for will have their own column where I can interact, where I can be up to date. One last thing, and then we'll wrap up the main lecture. So TweetDeck, it's TweetDeck.com, but technically tweet, TweetDeck.Twitter.com. If you open another tab, make a note of the address, Analytics.Twitter.com. These are the free statistics for like a real marketing, social media marketing guru, where you can keep track of. This tweet was very popular. It reached these people. My demographics seem to be uh, 20 to 40-year-old females in San Diego. Analytics, A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S, dot Twitter, dot com. Turn on, you'll probably have to turn on analytics the first time. And then you're going to see cool charts and tell you this tweet reached 20 people. This one reached 24. And one engagement. One person actually replied to it, retweeted it, whatever, and that had a rate of 4.2. This one reached 18 people. One replied to it or whatever. You can click to see the detail. 5.6. This one has a 10% engagement. 19, 
19 reach or impressions to engagements. You can always click to see the details. One was a click to the link and one was that they expanded the tweet. They clicked on it to view it completely. This one about um, this one, this here about your analytics, as, as you use it more, it's going to gather a lot of information. And the point of this, when you do any social media, is people say, well, what? I don't know what to tweet about, and what's the best time to tweet, and you know, how do I reach an audience? This is going to be telling you this information, because you're going to try things. You're going to make yourself a goal that you're going to tweet once a day. You might think, that's, I'm going to run out of things to, to tweet about on the second day, on the fourth day. Well, the, if you take my class at Southwestern College, where this is an assignment for grades, I do have people use these social media things pretty intensely. One of the assignments, the Twitter assignment, is you must tweet a new thing with a different hashtag every day for one week straight. Uh, and it forces people to be creative and to try things. And, okay, what am I going to think about now? Let me add this picture. Let me retweet something. Let me think of something. Because if you're going to do this seriously, you have to always be creating content. ABC. Always be creating content. ABCC. Always be creating content. Pictures, text, videos. And this will tell you how effective you are. As it populates with info, it'll tell you your tweets with pictures work better than your tweets with videos. Your tweets with these hashtags work better than those at this time. And Google Plus has something very similar. We didn't get to it, but there is a screen on Google Plus also called Insights that will tell you where your traffic came from, what they looked at, all of that good stuff. And Twitter has one too, Analytics. After you activate it, instead of typing in the address, you will have it in, in your icon here. It's not on mine yet but analytics.twitter.com or it'll show up here in the menu after it's been activated. And knowledge is power and this will help you be knowledgeable so you can be powerful on Twitter. We're going to end... Uh, selecting at your audience for filter audience so you can click what you want by assuming Yeah, exactly. Up on audience Right now, mine's nothing really there. Well, I guess a little bit is there, but it's telling me right here. You know, even these things that you wouldn't think about, household income categories and net worth. <coughs> because the more people use Twitter, the more Twitter knows about people. So right here, so far with the connections that I've had, more people are interested in comedy. So if I tweet stuff about music, it could reach more of an audience. And I don't trust these just yet because my account is so new. But as you use it for a week or two or a month or two, this will really solidify with a lot of good information. It just means um, eyeballs. It means this showed up in front of someone. They saw it. Um, so if you get high impressions, that's good, but engagement is better because engagement is then actually someone clicked on it or replied or followed you, and then it gives you the engagement rate. Yeah, like some type of interaction. Engagements are any type of interaction, and then this is a this is a you know a, a formula that says this particular tweet was this effective. If you want to boil it down, this tweet was 4.2 percent effective. The other one down there was 10 percent effective. So yep, a lot of great information. What we'll do is any final questions and then some lab time until 9.30. Remember, the more you use this, the more you get comfortable with it, the better you'll get at it. And I recommend that you get the, the app for your device so you'll always have Twitter with you, Google+, Facebook, etc., and you can use it on the go. Any general questions? Is this a multiple account? This guy coming to one time. What's a different name? Twitter and this one. Because activity, you can see activity. This is multiplication. You can see what is.
It's very similar, but here's one of the big differences. Okay. You're welcome. If you look at the little icon of accounts, you can you can add more accounts. So you can have other people connect to your one account to help you manage your Twitter. Instead of only you, you can add another Twitter account. So another person could also tweet on your behalf. That's very powerful because I'm going to run out of things to say, but other people in my company could help. That's the big difference there. Any other general questions? All right, so we'll have a little bit of lab time. Next time when we come back, we're going to be looking at Facebook, the biggest social network. You might think you've got other experience in it, but we're going to talk about business pages in Facebook, uh, boosting posts, and other aspects. How to stand out, because we're going to see very quickly, we're a needle in a haystack in Facebook, because it has over 1.2 billion users. Not million, billion and the population of the world is about six or seven billion. So, so many people in the world use Facebook. Great, a very big audience to reach. Not so great. It's a very big audience where we're not going to stand out as easily as other networks. But we'll talk about that. Right here, as you say, you have to bring some kind of app so that we talk about discussing about If you come to the Friday class, I'm going to do Instagram. And to use Instagram, you have to use it on a device. You can't use Instagram very effectively on a website. You have to create an Instagram account on a device.